Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to EDIUS 9. The program has arrived, and I've been working with it on my desktop system now for about three weeks, and have found it uh, very stable, very nice to work with. Not a lot has changed, really, from version 8.5x, but uh, we are told that as months go by, we will be getting a lot of uh, new features and functions uh, arriving uh, into the program. So with that being said, if you are brand new to EDIUS, and maybe you've downloaded the 30-day free trial, and uh, you're wanting to get started with EDIUS 9. If you are advancing much faster than what we are able to record tutorials for uh, EDIUS 9, you can always do a search on EDIUS 8, and even version 7, and uh, the tutorials that we have recorded on 7 and 8 will be very applicable to the EDIUS 9, and uh, most of the things that uh, are taught there will work in EDIUS 9 as well. So if you have a question about how to do something in EDIUS 9, go ahead and do a search uh, either at the YouTube or our website, ediustips.com, and uh, you'll find a tutorial there that uh, will help you out. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. You'll notice that uh, we're now branding uh, as Learning Media Skills. We are recording some tutorials on some other programs like After Effects, Photoshop, uh, Lightroom, and a few other programs that uh, I've been working with over the years. And uh, so we wanted to make this a little bit more generic. And uh, we'll include uh, a lot of those tutorials actually over on ediustips.com as well. The reason why we have a YouTube channel is that uh, we find that there are a lot of people that are trying to learn EDIUS from all over the world. And uh, they may be students and don't have a credit card to sign up at ediustips.com. And uh, having our videos hosted now at uh, YouTube allows people to access servers that are more in their region and can play the uh, tutorials uh, maybe perhaps a little bit uh, smoother than accessing my server here in the Chicago area. However, if you would like a little bit more organized workspace, you, you may find it a little easier to work with ediustips.com. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with EDIUS version 9. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to start up a new project. You'll notice that I'm using Workgroup 9. Uh, if you have downloaded just the uh, EDIUS Pro version 9, the functions and features are basically the same. So uh, don't worry about that. All right, now actually the first time that you run the program, you will be asked a series of questions that will help EDIUS set up a number of presets for you. Let's go ahead and start a new project, and you'll see these presets here that have populated this area in here uh, have been determined by the questions and the way you answer the questions ticked off the boxes there the first time you ran the program. But don't worry if um, you can't find a preset here that uh, is going to work well with your particular project. All you have to do is pick something that's close at this point and hit the Customize button, and then EDIUS will allow you to customize it further. Let's first of all give this a name and uh, verify that the folder that it's going to go into is where you want it to go. It's recommended that wherever possible that your project be saved on a hard drive that's separate from where the program has been installed. So as we have installed uh, EDIUS 9 on the C drive, let's go ahead and change that. Um, see what we've got here under one of the external hard drives. Probably got an EDIUS projects folder here, so let's just go with that. And uh, I like to keep this box checked, create folder with a project name. That puts everything related to the project in its own folder. Okay, so with all of that selected, making sure that the customize button is checked, let's hit OK. And here's where we'll have the opportunity to be more detailed and specific about the project settings. Let's take a look at our video preset options. You'll see that EDIUS 9 has a lot of uh, 4K options, also a lot of high definition options, and even going down into standard definition. And it is set up to work in both the PAL TV standard as well as the NTSC standard. And there's also some frame rates that are, would be more appropriate for film use or film look. Now, if you're kind of new to video editing, you may be just a little overwhelmed here as to what option would be the best one to choose for your project, for your video preset. Probably two things that you could ask yourself. The first question you could ask yourself is, what were the settings on, your, on the camera that is going to be supplying most of the video for this project? Was the video shot in 4K? Was it shot in high definition? What frame rate uh, was it shot at? 
Was it shot in progressive or was it shot in interlaced video? Were you shooting at a film rate or a regular broadcast rate? And uh, if you're not quite sure the answer to those questions, you could maybe check uh, your camera and uh, see what settings you had it set for when you were filming for the project. But probably the more important question to ask yourself is, uh, what is the final project going to be delivered for? Is it going to be just shown on the internet or projected on screens? Or is it going to be uh, sent off for broadcast television? If it's going to be used for broadcast television, especially high-definition broadcast television, you are probably going to want to look for a setting here that has an I at the end of it for interlaced, uh, rather than P for progressive. If you take a closer look here, you'll see that uh, a lot of these have a P at the end. That uh, stands for progressive. But uh, as you get into the high definition settings here, you'll see that some of them have an I at the end. And uh, then to know which one, a 59.94I or a 50I, which one to choose there will depend on whether you are sending your project out to, uh, for broadcast in the PAL TV standard, you'd want to go with 50I. If you're sending it into NTSC TV standard land, which is basically North America and Japan, you'll want to go with the 59.94i. So ask yourself what your project is going to be sent for. If it's just going up on the internet, any of these progressive settings will work just fine. Now there's a few other questions that people often ask uh, when they're trying to decide this frame rate. What's the difference between 24p and 23.98 and which one should I choose? That would be a good example of checking with the frame rate of your camera. However, there are some instances where the, the frame rate on the camera is, is not as advertised. There are some Canon cameras, for example, that say that they're recording at uh, 30p, and when you set it to um, NTSC, but it's actually recording at 29.97p. And so the best thing to do is to shoot a few sample clips and then bring them into an EDIUS project and have EDIUS. You can right-click on any clip and choose Properties. And then you'll be able to find out exactly what that uh, f video footage was shot at uh, with the frame rate. And then the next time you start a project that's going to be using that footage, you will be able to select the right uh, piece of material. And once we launch this project, uh, I'll maybe show you what we mean by that. Now something else to note, just because um, all of your camera footage might have been shot in 4K does not necessarily mean that you are going to want to edit in 4K. Once again, you have to ask yourself, where's this final project going? Um, is my client asking me to deliver the project in 4K? And if so, then yes, you are going to want to choose one of these 4K settings. If, however, all you need is a high-definition version of your film for use on the internet, for example, or you know that the venue that you're going to be sending your project out to does not have a 4K projector, you might as well just edit in, in high definition. And EDIUS will automatically convert the 4K footage down to HD footage for you to work with. All right, well, that's getting ahead of ourselves. We'll take a look at all of those things as we get started with these tutorials. Let's maybe take a look at some of these other settings and talk about them. Well, let's first of all maybe choose a preset. Uh, I usually and now these days just delivering for the internet. So I will choose a 29.97p HD. And uh, then the frame size is correct uh, showing up here. The display aspect ratio, yes, that's fine. The frame rate, 29.97 is good. The field order is progressive, perfect. My camera is still shooting in 8-bit. We'll leave that, but if you know that your footage has been shot in 10-bit, you will want to make that choice here. If you know that your footage is 10-bit, go ahead and hit the 10-bit at this point. Okay, color space. This is new for EDIUS 9. And for most uh, projects, you can just leave it at the default setting there, BT.709. There are some other options here. The BT601 is more for standard definition. And then some of these other ones are working with um, high dynamic range video. And once again, you're you're dealing with a high-end camera for that type of thing. We're talking red cameras. And, and so if you're shooting with a red camera and it's high dynamic range, you'll want to go with one of these settings. And which one you choose here will depend a little bit about who you're delivering your project to. It's something that you can change uh, at the end of your project as you're exporting your video. So don't be too worried about 
not choosing the right one here, you can always change this project setting from the project itself just before you export. So we'll leave it at BT709 for our high definition project. Stereoscopic editing will leave off. The sampling rate for audio is fine at 48,000 Hertz. And audio channels. For some reason, EDIUS defaults to eight channels, but uh, the most cameras shoot uh, in just a two channel stereo. And uh, so that's what I usually uh, go. If you know that your camera is shooting in four different channels and you want to be able to access those then you know you could change that here but just because we put two channel here doesn't mean that you're restricted to two channels of audio you know once you get into your project you can add as many layers of audio you can bring in a layer for music a layer for narration and so for most projects all you'll need is a two channel and then just add extra layers for the extra types of audio that you want to use audio bit depth is fine at 24 Let's take a look over here. The render format, uh, Grass Valley HQ standard. I usually change this to fine. The overscan size, I usually change this to zero. And we'll explain why in another tutorial. Audio reference level, that again is not so important these days uh, that we're not sending out to broadcast. But uh, check with your broadcaster again as to what level they like to have this at for uh, creating bars and tone at the beginning of your project. I usually put it at minus 12. The resampling method, average area, fast and sharp. We can leave it on the default for now. There may be times when we want to change this over to another setting, but the default one is fine. And time code, we don't worry about that too much anymore. Um, drop frame, you can leave that. and. Here's where I do make some changes. Um, I never did uh, understand the VA tracks. I'm not sure why people wanted to work with a track that included video and audio. Not sure why it is still the default in EDIUS 9. Um, so I usually change that to zero. And uh, the title track system, we don't really use that anymore. We just add all of our graphics and titles on another video layer. So I will increase the video layer to say three or four. Let's go with three and then the audio tracks uh, I'll leave it for. So what this will give me is four tracks to start out with of stereo audio, two channel stereo audio, but I'm not limited to that. I can add as many audio tracks as I want. So we'll hit OK and this will start the program. However, before we do that, I just want to point out that EDIUS is not going to remember all of these customized settings that we just did. So the next time I start another project and hit customize, all of these default settings that we've changed are going to be reset. There are some uh, workarounds to that. We can set up our own custom presets, and we'll show you how to do that in another uh, project. Let's hit OK and start the program. So we have our interface here. Once you launch a program, it's good to save it once. So just hit Control S, and that'll save the project. And Edius will know that you're serious about starting this project. Now, um, just maybe show one thing here that we talked about. Let's load in a clip or two. Just right click on any one of these clips, scroll down to properties, and we have a properties window here. And this tells us the full story about the, this clip. First of all, uh, it looks like it's uh, 4K, and the color space is BT709, so we've got the right setting there. We notice that it's progressive, but the, the thing that I wanted to point out here is that this tells us exactly the frame rate that it was shot at. So even if your Canon camera is uh, in your menu settings, you're choosing 30, what looks like 30 frames a second, Canon is actually shooting at 29.97. So what can happen is if you choose a project setting of 30 frames a second progressive, and you're dropping on these Canon clips that are 29.97, you may notice a little bit of flickering going on, and you're wondering, well, what, what's wrong with my camera? What's wrong with Edius? You know, so, but that can all be solved by making sure that the frame rate of your footage is the same as your project settings, and that will clear up a lot of problems. All right, well, I think that that does it uh, for this uh, introductory lesson on getting started with EDIUS 9. If you are interested in EDIUS 9, check out some of our other tutorials and go ahead and subscribe, uh, ring the bell as they say, and uh, like, share, and uh, we'll bring you some more tutorials on EDIUS Pro version 9.